Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. How are you feeling today? I hope everyone is in good health today. Let me introduce myself. I am Puan Noriza Awang from SMK Anderson, Ipoh Perak. In this session today, you will learn about the human digestive system. Boys and girls, before we get started, please make sure you are ready with a science form 2 textbook, a notebook and stationery. Alright, now let's get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at the learning objective for our lesson today. Boys and girls, by the end of this lesson today, you will be able to elaborate and communicate about digestion. Alright, now are you ready? Stomach rumbling is the sound of your stomach and small intestines engaging in the digestive process. When your stomach is full, you can't hear the sound because it is muffled. Your stomach contracts to ensure that there is no leftover food in the stomach. When that happens, you may feel and even hear that growling sound. That sound tells you that your stomach is empty, but it may not necessarily mean you are hungry. The gut-brain axis is a close bond that exists between the digestive system and your brain. Emotions including stress and brain disorders affect how your body digests food. Boys and girls, have you eaten today? I'm so hungry. Look what I have here. What will happen to the bread after I had eaten it? Wow, that is correct. It will be digested. But boys and girls, what classes of food do you think are contained in this bread? Mmm, yes, bread contains carbohydrates. So, can you imagine how bread is digested? Yes, correct. Bread is digested as it moves through our digestive system. Boys and girls, what is the meaning of food digestion? Food digestion is the process of breaking down food that is complex and large into molecules that are small, simple and soluble so that they can be absorbed by the cells of the body. You burp to release extra air that you swallow if you eat fast, drink carbonated drinks or smoke. In 1822, a fur trapper accidentally shot a 19-year-old man named Alexis St. In 1822, a fur trapper accidentally shot a 19-year-old man named Alexis St. Martin. Army surgeon William Beaumont successfully patched up St. Martin, but the trapper was left with a hole in his stomach's abdominal wall, which is called a fistula. Over the next decade, Beaumont conducted 238 experiments on St. Martin, some of which involved sticking food directly into his patient's stomach. He drew several important inferences from his work, 
including that fever can affect digestion, and that digestion was more than just a grinding motion of the stomach, but also required hydrochloric acid. Classify the process of digestion. Good job! Digestion can be divided into two. It can be divided into physical and chemical processes. The physical process involves chewing, swallowing and peristalsis. It involves breaking down food into smaller particles in the mouth with the teeth, tongue and saliva. Let's take a look at this clip. The digestion starts by chewing the food. The chewing process is the physical process. While the chemical process is the process of breaking down food into smaller pieces with the help of enzymes. Let's take a look at the next clip. After the chewing process, food is digested using a chemical in our stomach. Boys and girls, let's compare the physical digestion and chemical digestion. Both physical digestion and chemical digestion happen in the digestive system, where breakdown of food occurs. Let's take a look at the differences between physical digestion and chemical digestion. For your information, physical digestion happens in the mouth while chemical digestion happens in the mouth, stomach, duodenum and intestine. Physical digestion does not involve enzymes, but chemical digestion involves enzymes. Boys and girls, let's take a look at this picture. This is the structure of the human digestive system. There are seven organs involved in this system. Let's check it one by one. Our digestive system consists of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small intestine, rectum, and anus. Now, boys and girls, let's take a look at this picture. Do you know what happens in our mouth when we eat? Aha! Food is chewed by the teeth and the particles of food are softened by saliva. But why? In the saliva, there is salivary amylase. It breaks down starch into maltose. The stomach can stretch and hold up to an average of 1.5 kilograms of food at one time, which is equal to more than the weight of two black bears. Gastritis or gas problems in the stomach is a condition where the stomach membrane layer gets disturbed and leads to the secretion of acids. Once these acids come in contact with the stomach walls, it gives rise to pain and discomfort. This condition ultimately leads to a problem called gastric. There are many reasons behind the heavy gastric problem from regularly being on empty stomach for a long time or excessive intake of unhealthy or spicy food to taking alcohol, stress, 
tension, and anxiety are also major reasons behind multiple complications related to gastric. Another simple yet important reason is the habit of not chewing food properly. Internal infections can also give rise to gastric problems. Some other reasons are Helicobacter pylori. It is a bacteria that lives in the mucus lining of the stomach. If not treated on time, this infection can lead to ulcers and in some people, stomach cancer. Bile reflux A backflow of bile into the stomach from the bile tract. How to control gastric If you are wondering how to solve gastric problems at home, here are a few simple tips. Drink plenty of water. Include lemon juice in your diet. Drink warm water and use baking soda and lemon, peppermint, apple cider vinegar mixed with water, cloves and lactose supplements in your diet. Drinking a glass of cold milk, buttermilk and mint juice also helps. You can also try drinking tea. A warm cup of fennel chamomile or ginger tea can help you solve stomach bloating, the root cause of gastritis. You should eat healthy meals. Include whole grain foods, fruits and vegetables in your diet. You can exercise and eat healthy by preparing meals at home whenever possible. Try to avoid fried food and junk food as much as possible. You should also aim to eat smaller meals. If you are used to eating larger meals, start breaking them up so that you eat smaller meals throughout the day. This can help curb abdominal pain and gastric problems. Avoid specific foods like hot and spicy foods, carbonated drinks, fiber drinks and supplements, smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol and chewing gum. Take medication. The amount of saliva you produce increases when you throw up to protect your teeth from the acid in your stomach that will come up. An average person produces 2 pints of saliva every day. That is equal to 32 ounces or 2 cans of soda. So, boys and girls, can anyone tell me what this is in the picture? Very good. It is esophagus. Boys and girls, what happens in the esophagus during digestion? Awesome! The process of peristalsis at the wall of the esophagus pushes the food into the stomach. Food that enters the esophagus is called bolus. Now, let's watch this clip together. It shows how peristalsis occurs. So, boys and girls, from the clip, we can see the process of peristalsis. Does anyone know what peristalsis is? Excellent! Peristalsis is a series of wave-like muscle contraction that move food through the digestive tract. Boys and girls, let's take a look at this picture. Can anyone tell me what is in the picture? Aha! It is the stomach. What happens in the stomach? In the stomach, protein starts to be digested. But how is protein digested? Protein is digested when it is broken down into polypeptides 
in the presence of protease. How is protease produced? Awesome question! The walls of the stomach secret protease and hydrochloric acid. What is the function of hydrochloric acid? Hydrochloric acid activates the protease and kills bacteria in the food that enters the stomach. What do we call the food in the stomach? Food that is semi-liquid is called chyme. Well, boys and girls, do you have any idea what happens in the next part of digestion? Let's find the answer together. Food enters the first part of the small intestine, that is, the duodenum. Besides the duodenum, the liver is also involved indirectly in digestion. The liver produces bile that is stored in the gallbladder. The bile emulsifies fat into small droplets and neutralizes the acid in the chyme. Other than the liver, the pancreas produces pancreatic juice which contains the enzymes amylase, protease and lipase. Pancreatic amylase digests starch into maltose. Protease digests polypeptides into dipeptides. Lipase digests fat into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, boys and girls, let me ask you a question. Do you know how a person gets nutrient from the food? Aha! The small intestine carries out most of the digestive process, absorbing almost all of the nutrients you get from the food into your bloodstream. The walls of the small intestine make digestive juices or enzymes that work together with enzymes from the liver and pancreas to do this. The small intestine secretes the enzymes maltase and protease. Maltase digests maltose into glucose. Protease digests dipeptides into amino acids. Now, what happens to the undigested food in our body? The undigested food will enter the large intestine. Let's look at the picture. It shows the large intestine. Here, in the large intestine, the process of water reabsorption happens. Boys and girls, how are you doing so far? I hope you are still with me. Let's look at this picture. This is the rectum. Food that is undigested, which is known as feces, enters the rectum and is stored here. Now, what happens to the feces? Let's look at the picture. It shows an anus. Feces is excreted from the body through the anus. Boys and girls, let's recap all the enzymes that we have mentioned earlier. Boys and girls, 
what are the examples of enzymes that are involved in digestion? Awesome! Amylase, protease and lipase are examples of enzymes in digestion. Enzymes are made up of protein. What is the function of each of these enzymes? Our body produces enzymes to quicken food digestion. Without enzymes, the digestion process happens at a very slow rate. Boys and girls, let us answer these questions now. What is meant by digestion? Hmm, good job, boys and girls. Food digestion is the process of breaking down food that is complex and large into molecules that are small, simple and soluble so that they can be absorbed by the cells of the body. How are you doing so far, papers? I hope you can stay with me for the next part of our lesson. Now, let's try to answer the following questions. Question 1. Identify parts T and W. Let's check your answer. T is the stomach and W is the anus. Did you get the answer right? That's great! Next is question 2. Name the part where carbohydrates start to be digested. Mm, mouth. Alright, now let us move to question 3. Where does protein digestion begin? Let's check your answer. Wow! Amazing! Your answer is correct. Protein digestion begins in the stomach. Congratulations to those who have successfully answered all the questions correctly. Boys and girls, you are now able to elaborate and communicate about digestion. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Until we meet again, see you in the next class. Thank you and goodbye everyone.